Welcome back. I am Michelle Gribble Dates, creator of Story and Stretch, narrative yoga for kids, and author of Story and Stretch, a guide to teaching kids yoga using seasonal stories. In this video, I would like to talk with you briefly about the mindfulness section of the Story and Stretch book. And to give you an idea of how impactful and important each element of a Story and Stretch session is, um, I want you to understand that the mindfulness portion is the shortest. It only lasts one minute. And out of that one minute, I have watched children experience increased self-awareness, um, a greater connection to their peers, and appreciation for all of creation, as well as the myriad of benefits that I'm sure you are already familiar with from seeing um, articles on mindfulness. Benefits like improved skills associated with listening and focusing and problem solving and just an overall greater um, ability to access a calm, relaxed state and enhanced well-being. And not only is the impact of mindfulness on children remarkably positive, it's also pretty quick, which is really fun as the teacher. Um, so in the book, I clearly outline how to lead children in mindful breathing and mindful seeing and mindful eating and mindful listening and mindful walking and mindful physical feeling. And really, you didn't need me to break down how to lead each of these mindfulness activities because it is so, so easy um, and also really enjoyable. More specifically, you didn't necessarily need me to write out how to lead each of these mindfulness practices because of what mindfulness is. And all mindfulness is, is paying attention to what is happening right now. It's just paying attention to one thing. That's it. And it's really important that the, the children that you serve, that they understand how simple practicing mindfulness is your class should be able to explain to someone outside the class um, what mindfulness is and how to practice a specific mindfulness activity like mindful seeing or mindful eating. I take the children understanding mindfulness so seriously that in my classes, um, before we practice our one minute mindfulness activity, I have the kids remind me what mindfulness is, and then I also ask them what they think that we're going to be doing simply by telling them the name of the activity. So if we're going to be practice mindful listening, I ask them to tell me what they think we're going to be doing specifically, and hopefully they say paying attention to any sounds that we hear for one minute. And yes, I keep it to one minute. Um, one minute is honestly all that's necessary for the children to gain the benefits of the practice. And then there is that concept of too much of a good thing. So, you know, simply put, it's enough and it's not too much, which is a most important balance to find for any activity that you are leading with kids. Parents and teachers, they are often amazed that I can keep the children engaged for 45, 60, even 75 minutes. And part of that is because I lead them through so many different yet related similar activities. So we practice meditation right after mindfulness. So that will be the next video clip. Um, and meditation and mindfulness, they are indeed different, but there are similarities. And I find that it's better for children to engage in one minute of mindfulness, followed by a few minutes of meditation, than to do one activity for longer. And then I guess one last thing um, is that in the book, you will notice a half dozen tips for teaching mindfulness. Those tips are super helpful, both for you and for the children you're serving. So make sure to read through them and to use them. Joy practicing.
the one minute of mindfulness with the kids. And contact me through the Facebook page for the Story and Stretch book, which is www.facebook.com backslash story and stretch using seasonal stories or through my website, and that is www.beumbrella.com, spelled B-E-O-M-B-R-E-L-L-A. I would love to hear about different mindfulness activities that your group is doing beyond the ones that are outlined in the book. And um, if need be, I am here to help you troubleshoot, though this is probably the least likely section that you will need help troubleshooting. And if you haven't ordered your copy of Story and Stretch yet, you can also do that um, at beumbrella.com. So, blessings on your journey. Namaste and amen.